Good morning. Good morning. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. We are so glad that you are here today on our Earth Care Sunday. So we're glad that you're here with us in the sanctuary and that you're worshiping with us online. Welcome to worship. I am Elizabeth Johnson, and on behalf of Will Robinson, we are glad you are here. Pastor Diane is away this weekend spending some family time. But we are glad that everyone is here. There are ritual of friendship pads that you can sign. They're on the chairs. Marine pads. Also, um, if you're online, you can let us know you're worshiping with us by clicking this QR code with your device. Um, or you can go on our web page and scroll down to the blue connect button and let us know that you're worshiping with us. There are also prayer cards in the Ritual of Friendship pads, um, and if you are here with us, if you want to fill one of those out and hand it to an usher, we will include those prayers during our prayer time. And if you're at home, you can click on uh, the prayer QR code and add your prayers in that way, or you can always reach out to one of the pastors here um, with a prayer request. Today we are focusing on God's beautiful creation, and one way you can enjoy God's beautiful creation is to come to the nature walk at Pickney Island on Wednesday, April 24th. You will learn amazing things about God's beautiful creation, and there's a naturalist, it, it core is her last name, uh, and she will teach you many interesting facts. You can also grow with us. See what I did there? Because it's Earth Care Sunday. Grow with us. If you are interested in learning more about the church, you can come to a new members class next Sunday after the 1030 worship. Uh, and you don't have to join if you come to the new members class, but it's a good way to find out a little bit more about our church. I would like to specially thank our Earth Care Ministry group, um, and you'll hear more about them later. But we are an Earth Care um, congregation, and it is due to the, the, all the hard work of our Earth Care ministry. So we especially thank them today. I would love for you to wave to the people online and then greet one another in the name of the Lord. Welcome to worship. Good morning, church. Truly, it's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. As you remain standing as you are able, we invite you now to participate in the praise and worship with us. And of course, it is uh, Heritage Sunday, so if you're out on the nature walk and you find my golf ball, please return it back to me. It's probably in one of the swamps somewhere. But let us worship God on this Creation Care Sunday. Sing along with us, please. I thought I knew what I was talking about. I testified of your great love. While I was a soul on fire, there was no doubt. Bible believing strengthened, washed in the blood. Until I stumbled and made my mistakes That I could know in my soul How amazing was grace You brought me blessings out of tragedy You turned my whole song into a symphony And with your spirit living inside of me I'm a new creation and now I know what you were talking about Went from my head into my heart When I was broken at the bottom I found You're my healer and redeemer Jesus That's who you are You brought me blessings out of a tragedy You turned my whole song I'm a new creation, I'm a new creation, oh, 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 o
how amazing was grace. You brought me blessings out of the tragedy. You turned my whole song into the symphony. And with your spirit living inside of me, I'm a new creation. continue as we recognize that all the earth and all therein will recognize that we praise our God. Every praise, everything we do in praise is to our God. church.
Praise the Lord. Amen. The dog is Louisa. That is Elizabeth's dog. And it looked like Louisa wanted to preach today. She hopped right up here. She is ready to preach a song on Creation Care Sunday. Thanks be to God for our Creation Care work group with this reminder of God's creation. Louisa obviously is an animal reminder of our animal kingdom as well. That song we just sang, Every Praises to Our God, prepares us to hear God's word to us on this Creation Care Sunday. You will see it here on the screen. And we'd like to do that responsively with you joining me on the bowl that you'll see here in a moment. It is from Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise the Lord, all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise the Lord, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters in all deeps, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above heaven and earth. Praise the Lord. Thanks be to God for this God's holy word from Psalm 148. And indeed, Tomorrow is Earth Day. It is a day that is observed worldwide. It is a day that, that of course, spotlights our emphasis on God's good creation and what we need to do to protect it. We've been observing Earth Day now for 54 years here in the States, and we celebrate it today on this Creation Care or Earth Care Sunday because we believe that God calls us as his people to care for his creation, to protect his creation. The scripture that we read just now is part of that call. And of course, there are other scripture passages in the Bible that echo that same call. So that we would hear that word that we just read, and so that we would hear today's message as God's word to us, please join me in prayer. God of the resurrection, through your life-giving spirit, make these words your life-giving word to us inspiring in us a deeper faith in your Son, our risen Lord, and empowering us to answer your call to care for all of your creation. Amen. Here on the screen, you will see a picture that my wife Kate took of me and my children, Mary and Eddie. It was about 10 years ago now. I'm, I'm the one with the bald head. We're on the beach at Emerald Isle in North Carolina on the Outer Banks. We vacationed there many summers as a family, and we enjoyed doing that, what you're seeing here in that picture, hunting for shells and shark's teeth. And we have a pretty good collection of shark's teeth in our home. I remember a day much like this one in this picture, when we saw this extensive bed of shells on the beach. More shells than we could possibly count. None of them the same. Each of them like a fingerprint. 
I remember saying something like this to my children. Look at all of these shells. God created all the creatures that lived in them. In the Bible, God says, be fruitful and multiply. All of these shells are examples of that, of the many good things that God has created. Amen? Thank you. I was praising the Lord that day on the beach, just like the psalmist in today's psalm that we read. And all the creatures that had lived in those shells praised the Lord too. I'll say a little more about how that is possible here in a moment. And that is what today's psalm calls us to do, to praise the Lord. In fact, the whole psalm summons all of creation everywhere to praise the Lord. And did you notice the geography of the praise in that psalm? In the first six verses, it's downward from heaven and heavenly beings, like the angels, to the heavens, for example, the sun, moon, and stars. In the last eight verses, the geography of praise is upward from the depths, the sea monsters and all the deeps, to the inanimate order. For example, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, to animals. For example, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, and Louisa. Oh, that wasn't in the psalm. <laughs> then to humankind, kings of the earth and all peoples, young men and women alike, old and young together. So from the highest heights to the deepest depths, all creation everywhere is called to praise the Lord. In fact, the word all occurs 10 times in this one psalm. And each call to praise in this psalm is an imperative. And there are eight of those imperatives in the first four verses alone. As Old Testament scholars Walter Brueggemann and William Bellinger write, this psalm is like Psalm 150 in that it's all-encompassing and powerful summons to praise takes up most of the psalm so that it is impossible to ignore, even overwhelming. For this psalmist, the overwhelming call to praise is because of the Lord's glory. That's what he says. Because the Lord's glory is above heaven and earth. It's above all. Because he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, as we sang at 10.30 a.m. on Easter in glory. For the psalmist, the overwhelming call to praise the Lord is also because the Lord created all, orders all, and sustains all. That's also what he says in this psalm. So just as we sing, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands, even when it may not seem like it. So, of course, all of creation should praise the Lord. But how is it possible for all of creation to praise the Lord? We are able to praise the Lord, but what about the rest of creation? For example, how is it possible for mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars to praise the Lord? How is it possible for wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds to praise the Lord? The psalmist doesn't answer that question, but I like how one commentary I read does answer that question. It says, they do that by being what they are and fulfilling their allotted functions. So, the creeping things that lived in those shells that we saw in that picture, my family saw that day on the beach, praised the Lord just by being what God had created them to be and by fulfilling their God-given functions. Think, for example, of trees. Like this stand of trees you'll see here on the screen, it was, it's right near my house. We might pause 
and admire trees like this on some days, some moments in our days, every now and then. But most days, most of the time, we probably don't think too much about them. But there is more than meets the eye. So much more than meets the eye when we see trees. While we see this, here's what we don't see on this next slide. How trees communicate. Older trees provide shaded younger trees and seedlings with sugars, giving them a better shot at surviving. Sick and dying trees add their resources to the network of roots beneath the soil to help healthier trees. And did you know that trees send warnings to one another when they are attacked by pests? We're learning things like this about trees because of the pioneering work of a woman named Suzanne Simard, and you'll see her picture here now on this next slide. There she is among the trees. Samard is the world's leading forest ecologist. And because of her work on how trees communicate and help one another, like what we saw in that diagram, she was named one of Time Magazine's most influential people of 2024. It was just, I think, released uh, here this past week. And if you want to learn more about her work, she has a very popular TED Talk that you can listen to. Of course, we also know that trees provide us and other living things with life-giving oxygen. So trees praise the Lord by being what God created them to be and by fulfilling their essential God-given functions on this earth. Thank you. In the Catholic Church, Francis of Assisi is the patron saint of animals and nature. Like the psalmist in today's psalm, Francis sees them, animals and nature, as spiritual beings that are able to praise the Creator. Francis even addresses animals and nature as brother or sister. For example, in one of his sermons, he preaches this, Birds, my sisters, praise God always and everywhere for the freedom you have to fly, for your ornate and colorful clothing, for the song given to you by your Creator. You neither sow nor reap, yet God feeds you. Your Creator, who gave you all of these benefits, loves you very much. So praise God always. Now, Here's the take-home. Here's the so what of this message. It's this. If God loves the birds very much, if God loves what he's created very much, shouldn't we, loving not just our neighbors, but loving them as our neighbors, and as stewards of all that God has created, shouldn't we do all that we can to care for it and to protect it? And shouldn't we do that so that all creation is able to praise the Lord? So that mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all trees, wild animals and all animals, creeping things and all birds are able to praise the Lord. Shouldn't we do that so that all creatures of our God and King, as we will sing here soon, are able to join their voices with the angels and the psalmist and our own in praising their Creator? Because right now, more and more voices in creation that could be praising the Lord are instead being silenced because of what we are doing to the earth, because we are not caring for it and protecting it as we should. And if you want to know more about how our church is trying to do that through our Earth Care Work Group, you will have an opportunity to hear more at the time of the offering and can just contact the church. And it's not just animals 
and nature. It's other people, men, women, and children, who could be praising the Lord are also being silenced because of what we're doing to the earth. Fewer and fewer voices of men and women alike, old and young together, are able to praise the Lord because we're not caring for it and not protecting it as we should. And we can think of vulnerable populations who are especially being harmed because we're not caring for it or protecting it as we should. But the good news, the good news that this psalmist declares, the good news that we hear in this psalm is that the Lord created all, orders all, and sustains all. Amen? So as we sing, he's got the whole world in his hands, even when it may not seem like it. So we will care for and protect the earth to the best of our ability, personally, recycling however we're led to do that as a church so that more of creation, not less of it, is able to praise the Lord by who they are created to be and by what God created them to do. Maybe, just maybe, one day it will be like Becky Chambers imagines it in her book, Psalm for the Wild Built. Psalm for the Wild Built, B-U-I-L-T. In the book, human beings have moved away from their previously destructive ways, wars and dominion and not caring for or protecting the earth as they should. Human beings in this future have learned to live in harmony with nature, reversing crises of weather and climate. They reorganize society around values of compassion, kindness, and respect for all of creation. In this future, human beings don't live in luxury, but they do live in peace. They've learned from their past mistakes and they've done the work needed to repair and restore all of God's creation. In that future, all voices in creation, mountains and all hills, trees and all fish, creeping things and all birds, will be able to praise the Lord. In that future, all creation everywhere will be able to join their voices with the voice of the psalmist and the voices of the angels and our own voices in praising the Lord. May it be so, Lord Jesus. May it be so. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So you've heard us um, talk about this Earth Care work group. Um, you saw several of them process. If you're in the Earth Care work group, will you please just stand so we can recognize you? There they are back there. <laughs> Yay! Because of their hard work, and your generosity, we are certified as an earth care congregation with the Presbyterian Church USA. Your generosity provides that our facilities are managed and maintained and upgraded to respect and cherish all of creation. Our worship and discipleship celebrate God's grace and glory in creation. And through education, we encourage and support each other in keeping and healing the creation God has given us. Our outreach encourages community involvement. I know that we have a group that goes and picks up trash, the Adopt a Highway group. We recycle coffee grounds. We, um, we recycle. <laughs> That energy efficient bulbs. So we really do a lot to try to take care of creation. So thank you for your generous support of our operating budget that allows us to better care for God's creation. Will the ushers please come forward to gather in God's tithes and our offerings?
As the ushers are coming forward to receive the offering, we encourage you as always to sing along with all creatures of our God and King. Pray with me. The most holy one, you are our creator, the one who breathed life into us all, the one who loved us first. We are grateful for your life-sustaining presence in our world and for the beauty of creation, for the rain, 
the ocean, and all the bountiful colors of nature, we are amazed at your imagination and design, your abundance, and the magnificent splendor you surround us with each day. Thank you for blessing us with families who love us, for friends who journey with us, and for mentors to guide us. You have provided us with this delicate and diverse earth and given us the privilege for caring for it. We confess that we have not always tended your creation with self-sacrificing and nurturing love that is needed to preserve the earth's resources. Forgive us when we harm the environment or deplete its assets. Help us find ways to attend to our world's needs and live sustainably so that our future generations may delight in your creation's treasures. Jesus, there are so many among us who yearn for rest and renewal. We pray for the poor, the hungry, and the neglected in our world. May their cries for daily bread inspire compassion and mercy among those to whom much has been given. Hear our prayers for those suffering in mind, body, or spirit. We pray for their healing and wholeness, for their strength and comfort, for their medical team's wisdom. Hear now the ones that we lift to you aloud or in the sacredness of our hearts. God, we add to those prayers, Richard, as he ends his time of life here on earth. For Rob, who is having health struggles, and for Cheryl with Alzheimer's. God, we pray for healing hands, for grace enough for each day, for comfort and peace as we all journey toward you. God, we pray for an end to the political, racial, and gender divisions and inequalities that scar your creation. Help us remember that all have been formed in your image and that all are good. We pray that people everywhere might have equality in the pursuit of the blessings of creation. Sacred One, we pray for all those places in our world affected by war and violence. Be with world leaders and give them your wise discernment to navigate peaceful paths forward and safety for all. We pray for families affected by unrest in Haiti, Israel, Palestine, Russia, and Ukraine, and all the places where violence reigns. We pray for the needs of those who hunger for peace. Most of all, we pray for your light in our world. A light that darkness cannot overcome. A light that guides our footsteps forward. A light that shines on all your children everywhere. We pray this in all things in the precious name of Jesus, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Please stand and join us.
Amen. How great God is and how blessed we are to have this Crossroads Worship and Music team. Thanks be to God. And you may not know that this morning, two members of this team up here are related. You have Lawrence Delagros and her son, Brian. So Brian, it's so good to have you here with us. Thanks be to God. As you leave this place, um, remember that there is a time of prayer. Pastor Elizabeth will be right back where that exit sign is on my left for those who would like to join her in a time of prayer, confidential prayer. And then also as you leave, I want to leave you with this African proverb. It says, you must treat the earth well. It was not given to you by your parents. It is loaned to you by your children. Believing that, let us work to have a future like we heard in today's message, where all of creation is able to praise the Lord. And as we do, we never do that alone, but we do it by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and in the love of God the Father Almighty and in the powerful fellowship of the Holy Spirit who is with us now and always. And all of God's good creatures said, Amen. Great.